back to the channel. So today we're going to be in the garage, but we're not going to be working. Um, we're waiting on part of our kit for our second gen swap. So anyhow, while we're in this little lull period, I figured I'd, I'd explain some things. I got a comment from somebody. I uh, can't remember who right off hand. But anyway, saying, you know, I need, I should explain a little more why I'm doing certain upgrades and stuff. And I guess really I have been lacking. Oh, another rabbit. Rabbits are all over the place. They must be mating. I don't know. But uh, they're all over the yard. I guess we don't have any foxes. That's a plus. Anyhow, so I haven't been explaining shit too well um, as to why I'm doing these upgrades. Like, you know, that particular thing. So I'll go over the upgrades we've done so far. As you can see, the front end's still together. Um, or back together, I should say. I don't know why I said still. Our Mishimoto intercooler is installed. Our electric fans are installed, but not wired up. We'll get to that. I don't know how much of that you'll see because I don't like it. Fan belt. a, &A Motorworks fan pulley delete. Harmonic balancer. Dual CP3 or twin CP3 as ATS calls it. Kit. Um, our turbo and manifold are out, as I said. I still haven't done the CCV delete, but we'll be getting there. Um, the intake manifold's out still. The fuel rail is in. All that kind of good stuff. I guess I'm going to do this kind of how we've been going through the videos and how we've been doing this. Um, the truck was stock except for deleted. That was the only thing done to it. It has a Mini Max tuner on it, which we will... I might be keeping that for gauges for the time being, but that is not going to be our tuner, tuning of choice. So, anyway, on to the upgrades. We started by taking the top end of the motor apart. We changed out and we put head studs in was the first thing. Now, the reason you want head studs, there's two different options from ARP, 625s and 425s. The 625s are much have a lot better clamping force, but they're also much more expensive. So we put 625s in. What that does is that with the increased cylinder pressures we're going to be seeing and boost and all that, that'll just keep the head gasket firmly seated and planted. Now, we didn't do it what would be considered the absolute right way. We did it kind of like the garage driveway guy install way of taking one bolt out, putting one in, which actually seems to work pretty well on these common rails. So from there, since we had the inject or since we had the head top of the head all apart, we put in valve springs and push rods. Now the reason behind the valve springs and push rods is uh, higher RPMs, higher horsepower, higher cylinder pressures, what have you, higher boost pressures. The valve springs might um, you might get valve float, you know. Um, where your, your stock valve springs just aren't keeping up with the demand of the higher RPMs and the, the, just the higher everything. So the push rods, kind of the same deal. Um, factory push rods can get bent. They can bend, uh, not bend, uh, distort or flex, causing you, you know, losing horsepower. So we upgraded those while we were in there, and then we went on to our 200% over injectors. The 200% over injectors is basically what it sounds like 200 percent more fuel um so that's a lot of fuel these trucks with the turbo we're going to be running with that i've seen guys videos at least of guys who can make a thousand horsepower now how far they're stretching it out and how safe it is i don't know we're not there yet but we're gonna find out um so that was what you know just more fuel is the point of the injectors and from the injectors we buttoned up the top end Put everything here back together, put our fuel rail in, and when we put our fuel rail in, we put in the fitting for our twin CP3 setup. So since we're talking about injection, we'll talk about the twin CP3 setup. We also put a fuel rail plug in here, race valve. The point of the race valve is, um, so that way you, you don't have the safety that's in there because when you're running a higher rail pressure, you can pop the safety and now you're getting like no rail pressure, no power. So we're, we got rid of that problem. We're going to run all the rail pressure we got. So the twin fuel kit, the reason for that is basically to keep the rail pressure. Rail pressure on a diesel, common rail diesel is your atomization. So if you're not getting a lot of pressure, just think of a hose. If you got a lot of pressure, you're getting... You know good spray and like when you you know it just it goes out 
if you don't have a lot of pressure, just it'll, it'll dribble out. I mean, that's a pretty basic way to try and explain it to you, but that's it. So having the twin fueler, we're going to be able to try and keep our rail. And I, the only reason I did a twin fueler over a big single stroker CP3 is because we had it on the gray truck already. And being this is still going to be stock fuel, there was no need to keep it on there. So that's the only reason I did that. Otherwise, I probably would have just gone with a stroker CP3, like a 10 millimeter or 12. That is it for injection at this point. Um, so, harmonic balancer in the front end here. The reason for the harmonic balancer is just uh, trying to keep the internals of the motor happy. They're externally balanced. Um, how necessary it is, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure. I did it more as a safety item. Uh, the 6.7 Cummins, the bottom ends are known to be a weak point compared to the 5.9s. 5.9, you can make a thousand horse for long period of time no problems the six sevens not so much um part of that is because the 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 six seven is like a i'm trying to remember exactly it's it's a board and stroked five nine is basically what it is so being that you have a longer rod throw so it changes the angle so that angle becomes kind of like a critical angle and thus the rod can break shrink or bend as you will if you will so i'm kind of doing this on a whim putting the balancer on there hoping that that will help with that will it help at all i don't know but better safe than sorry and it's it's an essential part of having a high performance motor so from the balancer we did our electric fans just mounted them up the reason for the electric fans is when the stock fan is engaged apparently it's worth like 30 horsepower so we did that and also i wanted to put electric fans on a fourth gen because i don't know if many people have done it so we did that we did our a and a uh a a a motor works fan pull we delete here and that's for a twin fueled truck i believe it's good for all the common rails i'm not 100 percent um but basically we got rid of the factory bracket and the factory idler and the fan pulley just to clean things up and make it easier to put the belt on and off in case we have an issue so that's why we did that that's more of an aesthetic thing you don't have to do that if you look at a lot of the high horsepower trucks before adam came out with this kit i don't know how many people have it currently but like when we were at ucc a lot of the guys still had that had like a serpentine belt to drive a lot of their stuff um a lot of them still had the factory fan pulley. So it's kind of neat that he came up with that, even though all these guys, the guys making the biggest horsepower in the country with the diesel truck hadn't. So let me think about it here. Oh, we also changed out our lower radiator hose um, because the other one was, this is a 10, so it was seven years old, 150,000 miles. If this blows out, as you can imagine, on a track, cooling all over the wheels and tires, Slick condition, unsafe for the price of it, just changed it out. Also went to these fancy uh, hose clamps that don't dig in your hose and they, they wrap real nice and they look good. So we did that as well. Oh, that's another thing. We deleted the grid heater. The truck's not getting driven in winter. So this will provide a little more airflow, open up our intake plenum a bit. And just uh trying to get every little bit of flow or air we can in the motor i mean that's all an engine is is an air pump just moving air around and that you know creating horsepower with that so we got rid of that so it, i think our studs will be here tomorrow or the next day then we will start our turbo install kit uh yeah i don't i think that's everything so i'm sure i'll be told if uh I missed something, but yeah, if uh, hopefully you enjoyed me kind of explaining what was going on and where we were at and why we were doing the upgrades we were doing. Uh, oh, the intercooler. I just saw it. The intercooler, the point behind that is if, when your, your exhaust gas comes into your turbo and you're compressing your intake air, you're going to generate some heat. So the, I think on a big truck, they call it an aftercooler, but on a smaller truck, they call it an intercooler. So the intercooler just cools those intake air temperatures down so that way you can get more air into the cylinder 
and create more power. So that was another upgrade we did, and I think that is it, which I think I've probably said three or four times already. So, anyhow, that's the explanations of the upgrades we've done so far. And uh, moving forward, we're still going to put our second gen swap turbo kit in. We have gauges to install. We got a bunch of wiring, which I am not looking forward to at all. I'm also going to be deleting some wiring because we're going to go with a single battery. So I think this cable can go. We got to get our alternator cable over to there because we can get rid of this big thing. Um, I have to do the exhaust still. I haven't decided what... I don't know where we're going yet. I still have to order the fuel system because I've been debating what to get. I know which way I'm leaning. We have a 48 RE swap to do. I'll do a couple videos on that because that's something um, a lot of people want to know about. So gauges, turbo, 48 RE swap, wiring, deleting some wiring. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of shit to do. The more I think about it, the more I got. And, I'm constantly looking at stuff like we had I don't know if you saw in the one video I had my intake horn with the blow off valve that's another one we're going to do blow off valve well I think I might be changing that intake horn out because I just came across some very interesting information which I will share in that video I know this was just a video of me rambling about and I don't know if you like that or not but let me know um, I hope I explained some things to you that maybe I was a little, um, maybe I didn't explain well the first time when we were installing the products, like why we did what we did. So, if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. I've tried to read and answer all the comments with a reply if I can. So, if you get missed, nothing personal, I just missed you. Busy, busy, busy. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did not, don't worry. The next one will be back to doing install videos. So if that's what you like saying, let me know in the comments. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get back to it. And, guys, ho ho thanks for stopping by. Um, like, subscribe, comment. And uh, when I see you again, I will have my wrench in my hand. I promise. See you guys later.